first we have Mary Schindel, who's done Influx and Canal Convergence and Terrazzo and Permit Projects, so quite a breadth of experience. Saguaro and Belt, and it's a digital drawing. 
And then on the right, that piece is rolled up into that blue site tube with some fiber optic and LED lights. And then um, the pieces hanging from the ceiling have water jet cut edges. They're dragonfly wings. And those are printed on plastic. So I started using fabricators that worked in more of a commercial realm, like sign makers and um, people like that people who make car parts, anything that I could find that would be able to do, you know, the kind of thing that I wanted. This is Goodyear Community Park, and the project title is Air, Earth, Water. This was an existing infrastructure project, which means this roundabout and that wall were already there, and it had already been used by the public, and they had certain ways that they liked to use it. They liked to sit on that wall, so I couldn't put anything on top of it. And this needed to be really durable also. So again, I used terrazzo uh, embedded in granite, which was uh, sandblasted. And that's a very durable way to do it. And then I used water jet cutting it again on the fencing there that you see. And it's got an Egyptian theme because Goodyear was actually um, founded to raise Egyptian cotton to make the airplane tires for um, World War II. So it's, I wasn't one, geez. <laughs> now my history is escaping me. But um, so I used Egyptian motifs and tried to, I went to the park and I saw what kind of wildlife was there and I saw how people used the park and I sort of went from that. This is Price to Move. This is studio art that I did. Um, I did this at 515 Gallery on Roosevelt. And what I noticed, and I think this was partly a reflection from being in public art, you can do these big, wonderful drawings and put them on Roosevelt, and people love them. They really do. But they don't want them. They want something they can carry home in their hands. And so I decided to do a project where I made a lot of small things. And I knew people liked light because they were always touching my light pieces and things like that. So I just did these little flower pots and called it Price to Move. And they all sold. It was, it was really fun. It was kind of fun because it was interactive. And they worked with little remote controls. And kids were playing with them. And I just let people buy them and take them then. So I, you know, that was something more friendly to the public than what we normally do, which is you have to come pick it up when the show's over, you know. No, take it today. <laughs> and then this is Canal Convergence. So I submitted my uh, slides from Price to Move to the call for Canal Convergence. And this is just a photograph. Photograph. These are photographs of just part of it. It went from Solari Bridge to Marshall Bridge and back again. And it was all small pieces, all lit pieces. We had to bury cord all along the canal. And, um, and it was really fun. It was, it was nice. I was sort of overwhelmed by installing it because it was just so massive. But it was really fun when I saw it all lit up. It was great. This is a temporary influx project. This was in the city of Goodyear. And this is called Wildflower Hops. This is in what is now a museum that was established by Gloria King. And she is um, a woman who's a longtime resident of Goodyear. King Ranch was part of the land that was given to Goodyear for different things, housing projects, things like that. She's, she's a really interesting woman. And um, so she had, it was a hardware store, and she made it into a little museum she called Memories. And so she, got tucked into having an influx project there. And so I worked with her, and we did this uh, piece in the window. And behind there, there's a lot of different things. She had all kinds of stuff from the Manhattan Project, even. Glass cases with all kinds of memorabilia in them. But it was, it was interesting. So the hawks are basically out in West, um, the West Valley. It's like a light box because when the light goes down, when the sun goes down out there, it's just it just fills the whole area with light. It's different than any other part of the valley. And also there are a lot of hawks. You'll see a lot of hawks. There's farmland, so there's a lot of stuff for them to eat. And um, 
I used also a bougainvillea, those are little bougainvillea flower petals that are floating around in the air because part of what intrigues me about nature is the fact that everything gets, in a, in a storm, everything gets mixed up together. The birds, the flowers, everything. And um, when you're out there in that part of the city, it's just real vast like that. So that's what this piece is about. So I'm interested in botanical elements and sort of how they connect to the places that people live. This is a lithograph, actually. I'm going to go back and forth, and I'm going to show you some of my studio work mixed in with my public art, because I do both at the same time. So the answer to the question of what do you do in between, <laughs> when, when, for instance, there's a recession and, and something is stopped cold, then you do your studio art and you apply for other projects. There's always, always something to do. But also another thing on that same line is when they tell you not to work, don't work. <laughs> right? <laughs> because there's a reason. <laughs> We call it pencils down, which means stop. <laughs> this is Las Palmeritas. Um, this piece is on Valley, this is a power station on 19th Avenue, um, a part of Valley Metro. So in that neighborhood, there are a lot of um, older plant gardens and plantings and things like that. But Bougainvillea is really, really predominant there. So I decided to just use the plant as sort of a um, representative of the neighborhood. And this is a terrazzo piece also. It's eight panels. It's 32 feet long by four feet high. And this is um, the memory of a tree is strong. This piece is actually about groves of pecan trees that used to exist in Mesa on Main Street. And this is the Mesa extension of the light rail. You can still see these pecan trees in the distance when you're traveling down Main Street. The piece is about people's memories of those groves and how um, you can still see them and the people that I grew up with who remembered them and even lived in them because what happened was when people started building homes, they built them right into the pecan groves. And so that's why they are still standing and they're still in grove formation. So you can still see them on like Pepper Place and some of those areas. But basically also, um, trees do have memories, and pecan trees have the kind of memory where they remember drought. So they actually, that's one of the reasons they're a good food tree for in the desert is because they have, they can remember drought, they know exactly what to do when drought starts to happen. And I actually took the title from an agricultural piece that was published by Texas A&M, which was part of my research. So, it's about people's memories, but it's also about how the trees are really resilient. Mary? Yes. What is that? Is that like a powder-coated aluminum, like water it's jet cut? steel. Steel? Okay. Powder-coated steel. Mm -hmm. And it's actually really large. I don't think it looks as large as it really is in photographs, but it's, it covers a whole power station. That was a project that had a lot of pencils down, because it was like, Okay, Mary, stop working because this we think we're going to take it over here, you know, and, and so it just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. It went from a 3D project to a 2D project, then a different power station was ordered. I redesigned it three times from scratch, but I never, never let go of the concept. I hung on to, like, the concept of the contracts. So that was the constant for me. As long as I could go back to that, then I felt like, you know, I still had a handle on the project. I didn't want to rethink the idea. This is Tech Shop, and um, it's, it was a challenge to install this. There are three of these large agaves that hang from the ceiling in Tech Shop. They're um, made out of lucite, water jet cut aluminum, and um, digitally printed plexiglass. And they are agaves. When agaves grow, they twirl. If you notice, their arms make a spiral. And so I wanted, I'd been, I had one in my front yard, and I'd been drawing it off and on for a while. And I'd, I'd done a piece from the side, but when I had the opportunity to hang something from the ceiling, I was really interested in showing that twirling pattern. And 
I think they're very interesting when you can look at them and they're almost falling to the ground. So, so I still draw and um, my drawing is also um, influenced by public art and from just, you know, you just get a totally different perspective. So I tried to keep, I tried to do both public art and studio art all the time. Sometimes, though, I am only doing public art because if there are deadlines, my motto in my studio is, if you're paying me, you're in first position. <laughs> if you're not paying me, you're in the back of the line. So basically, that's, you have to be like that. You just have to. And in terms of insurance, I carry it all the time. And I think that's probably the best thing to do. And keep track of where your face sheet is on your insurance because everyone's going to ask to see it. And um, it was funny when I was hanging these pieces at Tech Shop, uh, the project manager asked me, do you have, what kind of insurance do you have? And I said, oh, I, said, I have the kind of insurance that if I'm driving my car on your side and I hit something, <laughs> I'm covered and you're covered. Basically, that's what it boils down to. You don't want to damage anything. You don't want anything to damage you, and you know, and you don't want your project to damage anyone either. So, do you have any questions? So just for you to know, uh, Mary is one of the four finalists for our Sky Song project, a permanent project. They're in first position. <laughs> Uh, you said you had to learn how to draw digitally. What type of software do you use? Um, I draw in Illustrator, and um, then I sometimes export it into Photoshop. And when I give it to, it's really that really did make a huge difference because the screen in Mesa, the red screen, that's all I drew that all in uh, Illustrator, and I drew it so that the water jet cutter could take it in vector, program it, and you know, it, it makes it easier for them, but it also makes it easier for me, because you get that nice crisp line. And I have used other software like Corel, and I just didn't like it, but I know people who do love Corel, so if you, if you have that, that works, but it's for the flexibility more than anything else. Yes. Um, thank you so much. I'm so inspired to hear your whole story, and especially because I also I come from a um, painting, drawing, and, and still can painting background. And I came out today to see, in part, is there a place for artists from different media? Because of course, it's about our concepts and our visions rather than simply sticking to the a particular medium. My question to you is. Um, you were lucky to find to stumble upon that sort of entry point um, public art workshop. But if we don't come across that, and I guess I'll open this to you guys from the um, city Scottsdale so too. But um, what advice do you have as if you're starting out as opposed to either a seasoned public artist already reapplying? Um, or I forgot the other part of the question, but you know. Right, well, um, basically, I was just really fortunate that they were doing durable entry level projects. But I have seen people apply for durable projects. Donna showed one, it was his first public art project. Um, apply, you just need to really apply uh, for anything. But Influx is an excellent, excellent way to learn how to maneuver the whole thing. What the public is going to be interested in, how to keep it safe, where it's going to go, the site, your manager. Um, it also teaches you how to maneuver through sort of a system. You want to, and this is probably the best piece of advice I can give anybody other than don't work when they tell you not to. The other, the other thing is always, always go to your project manager first. You know, because somebody on the site might come up to you and say, hey, we want to move this over a foot. You're like, mm, I'll have to check. <laughs> <laughs> Project manager has your back. So 
that's, you know, and those kind of things you'll learn on a temporary project just as well as you'll learn on um, a durable one. But I would say start applying, apply for, and go to cafe or publicartist.org is another good site and just start getting your work out there. And some of our influx projects, I mean, they're not all 3D by any means. I mean, storefront, we've had fabric artists do things, we've had vinyl produced by 2D artists, so that's what's interesting about influx. The, the sites are there, and if you want to do something that, you know, is kind of on that window or kind of right there as a piece, or if you want it more that, you know, you're seeing a different installation like what Saskia did at Sasso Water a couple of years ago, you know. Yeah, so um, that gives us a, a wider spectrum where we could really look at 2D artists as well. Thank you, Mary. Thanks.